everyone with Sacred Dance with Trance. I'm so super excited to have Roy Allen, trance medium from Australia. I've been waiting to connect with him and we finally got everything together. And so everyone, Roy Allen. Hi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's lovely, lovely to uh, meet you there, Kathy. Uh, I've been re listening to a few of your uh, interviews and uh, found them absolutely fascinating. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. And I'm so grateful to have you here with us today because there's so many people super excited to hear from you. And, um, you know, I figure we would start off with um, your early life, the thing, you know, how you got involved, in, especially yeah. from the beginning. Right, well, when you go, how we got into uh, spiritualism, we really got to go back quite a way. Um, from when I was a child, uh, because I was always a slightly sickly child, and uh, I was walking with a limp, and uh, Dad thought uh, he's only trying to look for sympathy. Um, but eventually, Mum uh, got him to take me to a doctor, and uh, they discovered that my right hip was turned into pulp uh, and uh, the ball of my femur was literally wearing the hip bone away. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, uh, the only way at this time, we are talking 60 years ago now, more, more than 60 years ago, uh, and we were in Bulawayo in uh, uh, Rhodesia at the time. Uh, it's not called... Uh, Rhodesia anymore, I think it's called Zimbabwe. Uh, and uh, the only way that they could treat that particular ailment I had is that they would put both legs in plaster uh, with weights at the end um, to take all the pressure off, off your hip. Wow. And I was like this for oh, nearly 12 months in, in hospital. Oh my God. Uh, bed, totally bedridden. Uh, but while I was there, uh, a young lad, um, I remember his name, clear as bell, uh, Chris Cantor, uh, was put in the bed next to me. And uh, he had a huge growth in his uh, leg. Um, and they brought him in for uh, tests. And they discovered after the tests were done uh, that he had a very advanced cancer of the leg. Uh, and the doctors, the earth plane doctors, told his father that the only way that they could save him was to cut his leg off. Wow. Whoa. Well, uh, you can imagine now as a parent, you know, what that would uh, do to you. Yes. Now, his father was a spiritual healer. And uh, he said, no. And they said, oh, sorry, uh, we just need you to sign this form so that we can do the operation. Um, anyway, he said, no. Uh, and he went away. And uh, we were told later that he spent the next 24 hours in meditation. Wow. Uh, he then came back to the, to the hospital and said, you're not cutting my son's leg off. I'm discharging him. Well, you can just imagine the commotion that that caused, and they had solicitors there and police there, and uh, and eventually uh, stuck to his guns, and uh, he had to sign a, a waiver saying that he wouldn't he accepted full responsibility, and uh, they wouldn't he wouldn't hold the, the hospital responsible for any of his actions, etc. Anyway. When Chris was taken out, I mean, they literally had to hold his leg uh, and his body because it could separate. Uh, the cancer was about the size of a man's fist. I was told that you could actually put a man's fist in the hole. Oh my um, anyway, I, I proceeded uh, my stay in hospital. Um, I had no real problems apart from the fact that my immune system kept going down. But six months later, and remember, I had been in hospital for a total of 12 months. Uh, Chris Cantor walked into our ward. And the doctors gave 
uh, him tests and found that he was 100% free of cancer. Wow. Uh, and his leg was totally, totally cured. You could still see the mark where the cancer was, but, but that's all. Um, now, because of my stay in hospital, uh, my immune system got very, very low. Uh, I mean, to the point where somebody just walked past my bed with yellow jaundice, um, I forgot what they call it now, uh, but the next day I had it. Uh, and eventually uh, I came down with uh, rheumatic asthma uh, and they put me in an oxygen tent and they contacted mum uh, at work and uh, said, you need to come uh, to see your son because he's not going to last uh, very long because they thought I was on my way out. Um, and he said, well, I'm at work, I can't get there. So they sent a police car to go and collect her, uh, to bring her back. And uh, I obviously survived, because I'm still here. <laughs> um, <laughs> but they, the doctors then told mum and dad, uh, because his immune system is so low, he has to be discharged from hospital. Uh, but he will be a cripple all his life, uh, and it's unlikely that he'll ever walk properly. Obviously, I didn't hear that and I didn't accept it and I walk now totally normally and without a limp. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, but when uh, we were discharged from hospital, Dad started thinking about this lad who was in the bed next to me and looked out, went through the records, found out uh, where it is, and it turned out that he lived five doors down the road uh, from us in the same street. Wow, that's I mean, oh, incredible, incredible. Um, so dad took me uh, up to uh, Mr. Cantor's house and uh, knocked on the door. <laughs> and uh, Chris's dad, who was a medium, uh, looked to my, my dad and said, uh, you've come here to see if I can do anything for your son. And dad being the, the sarcastic person that he is, he thought, yeah, of course I have. What do you think I've come here for, you silly man? <laughs> you don't have to be psychic to do that. <laughs> I love that. Anyway, uh, Chris, had been told, Chris and dad had been told that uh, I was coming and uh, that I was to be accepted uh, for healing. Well, the healing took about three months and... Uh, we went up there, uh, I think it was about five days a week uh, for a half, three quarter of an hour healing session. Uh, and that healing uh, went or amounted to uh, a hand, because we did hands on healing, a hand on my hip, a hand on my uh, ankle. And uh, as a patient, I just felt this warm feeling uh, going up my leg. Um, but as a result of this healing, uh, I was cured. Um, now, Dad uh, was an atheist at the time. I mean, he was a firm atheist. Uh, I mean, this spiritualism, Christianity, and that was a load of bull. Um, but he was a very intelligent man. Uh, and he thought, well, all right. This has been done a lot of good for my, my son. At least I owe them the respect to do a little bit of investigation. Uh, so he did. And while he was doing the investigation, um, we were, his company moved us up to uh, Northern Rhodesia, uh, as it was then. Uh, and he was introduced to a spiritualist development group uh, and in this development group, they encouraged the uh, development of mediums or development of the people who are, who are sitting. Mm -hmm. Now, Dad thought, yeah, well, all right, you know, this is all about all about them. It's nothing to do with me. I, but, you know, I'll, I'll sit here. Uh, on his fourth visit, um, he went into trance and his guide, Amy, uh, came through. And dad was sort of, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> like, what's this happening? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, he developed uh, very quickly. 
um, and eventually AB told him that he has to move away from the circle um, and take up his own. And he said, no, 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 I can't do that. I'm, I'm not strong enough to do that. So AB arranged for the medium who ran the circle to be away one night. And AB and Dad's other guide uh, came through and ran the circle and said to him afterwards, um, Claire Wointley, well, you needed proof that you could run the circle. You've had proof. Now go and do and open your own. <laughs> wow, that is amazing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we did, uh, and uh, we were running uh, in Northern Rhodesia, uh, both a healing circle and a open circle, uh, what I call a teaching circle. Uh, at that, at times we had anything up to 24 patients, uh, coming wow. and, uh, then we moved back, uh, the other side told us to move back to Southern Rhodesia, um, which dad didn't want to do because we were very comfortable up in Northern Rhodesia. We had a very nice house and very, had a good job and everything else. So they got him fired. <laughs> um, <laughs> And he couldn't find another job, which really was horrifying. And my mum, when we had one of our meetings, said to uh, AB, why, what have you done? What have we done wrong? And she said, you haven't done anything wrong. I told you you needed to go back to Salisbury in Southern Rhodesia. Uh, now you have to. You have to. <laughs> and she said, but we haven't got enough money. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and uh, she said, no, AB said, you will have enough. Well, the move took place, all bills were paid, and dad had one pound left in his wallet. Oh my goodness, one pound, wow. One pound, but he had enough. That, that was uh, the thing, he had enough. So from the age of nine, uh, I was surrounded uh, with spiritual teaching, spiritual healing, uh, and therefore, I never thought it strange, you know, my f guide Henry, who I didn't know his name at that time, but my guide Henry, I often used to speak to uh, F friends uh, at school, had problems with headaches and that. I used to lay my hands uh, on their heads, ask for the healing guides to come through and take their... And I just regarded that as normal. That's amazing to be yeah. that long and, and be surrounded by this um, yeah. and do that. Oh my God, that's beautiful. Yeah, but I, I always knew, therefore, then that was my path uh, because it, it, it was great. And it was great because mom and dad uh, then had a lot of spiritual knowledge. Mm -hmm. They didn't try and put me down. They, you know, I was talking to playing with friends from the other side. Uh, they didn't think it was weird. They didn't say, you know, let's call in the man with the one little white coats and send him to a psychiatrist because the boy's <laughs> sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, and therefore, um, I became part of their, their group, uh, the healing group, uh, the teaching group. Um, because I was younger, uh, obviously I was in bed a lot of the times when the uh, teaching, but uh, Dad's guide, AB, had a very loud voice. Uh, and <laughs> therefore, <laughs> from the uh, the bedroom, you know, it was like I was, he was sitting next to me. So it, it, it wasn't a problem. Um, and I became an integral part of their healing group and their teaching group. My dad had an unfortunate personality trait, should we call it, in the fact that he wouldn't accept any other medium in the group. He was the man. He was the man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, mum developed, and she was actually an excellent uh, trans medium, but dad interfered with her... So psychology uh say you know, you've got to are, are you sure that is the message coming through are you sure it's your guard talking not you uh and really reduced her confidence uh 
uh, to the point where uh, she refused to uh, let the other side take over at all. Um, I mean, she had a really wonderful uh, guide. It was an Indian guide. Uh, we used to, his name was Shankar Whitker, I believe. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was great. But because of dad's trait, uh, people ask, they said, well, why didn't you become a medium before you did? And I said, well, no, I knew dad's feelings about it. And therefore, I was happy to be uh, to IC. Uh, I was happy to help. I was happy to give guidance to the people who uh, came. I was happy to be a helper at the healing. But I wouldn't let Henry, uh, my guide, take me over. And he tried. Uh, he tried. Uh, yeah. Uh, I said, no. Um, but... Eventually, Dad passed away. Uh, he passed away in 90, 1994. Uh, but two years before that, uh, he was put into a nursing home for aged care. Mm -hmm. And uh, the healing group um, and the teaching group, or that no, was only the healing group, uh, we took, I, I took over and continued. But then... It was then that uh, I allowed uh, my guide and the healing uh, guides to come through and utilize me. And people say, well, didn't you sit for development, etc." And I said, no, um, because they've been developing me for 30, 40 years. Um, and they were just very keen to get started. Oh, yes. Um, and therefore, it just seemed like a natural flow. Obviously, in the beginning, um, it was in very, very light trance, uh, very light trance. So therefore, I was fully aware of everything that was being said. And, uh, and sometimes you wonder, you know, is that me or is that them? Um, but yeah, I, I had total faith in them. So therefore, you know, I accepted the fact that it was them um, coming through. Um, but then our guides uh, told us that I have to close the circle down. Okay. I thought, all right, need to close the circle. They said, and we'll tell you when um, it's time for you to restart. So I said, yeah, okay, that's not, not a problem. Yeah. I thought, six months, nine months, maybe a year. 13 years. 14 years? Oh, my goodness. 13 years. Wow. Uh, I went to a, um, a medium uh, for a reading. Uh, we were up in Byron Bay at the time. Uh, and she said to me, ah, so the, she said, now I know why I came. I said, I don't normally do this, but I can see why I've come. I've come to talk to you. So I said, yeah, okay, okay. He said, it's time for you to start up your spiritual work again. Oh my goodness. Yeah, uh, right, okay. 13 years, all my contacts have gone, all the people who were in our circle uh, had moved away or disappeared. I thought, how do you start? You know, <laughs> do I, I can't just say, hey, uh, I'm a trans medium. Um, you know, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did, uh, is I started to go into a lot of the spiritualist churches around. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was an eye-opener. Because remember, I had spent 30-plus years in an excellent teaching circle, excellent healing, and my perception was that this was normal. Mm -hmm. This is what everybody had. Uh, I found out this was not normal, Everybody didn't have it, uh, and what we had was actually very special. Uh, the other thing that horrified me, um, as it has recently with Aiden, is the churches have gone away from philosophy almost totally. They were all about evidential work, mm -hmm. message giving, which is important. But it has its place. Uh, 
and as far as spiritual teaching is concerned, there was a void. There was just, you know, there just wasn't the amount of teaching out there, which I had anticipated. I expected you went to the churches. Uh, yes, they would have their evidential work, but a major part of it would be um, spiritual teaching, uh, philosophy, if you like to call it. Yes, um, and I love that. I love the philosophy. I, if, it, if, if there's anything, I'm into the healing, the philosophy, the spiritual truths. I mean, so I'm completely <laughs> reading your site right now, but I love that. I love that. Yeah, well, that to me is the most important part uh, of my, my work that I have to do. Uh, yes, we have a healing group every week. Uh, that is important as well, but it has its part. It's the main reason for healing is to demonstrate power. The same way as the clairvoyance, clairaudiences, it's to show that there's a power, there's a continuation of life, uh, and it's a power that people on the earth plane just don't, don't know, don't realize, and can't explain, so it has to be something else. Mm -hmm. uh, so therefore, I, find, I found that I was very dissatisfied uh, with the churches that I went. But they guided me to a particular church, uh, and they met there I met a few lovely people, and they were going to start a trance circle. I thought, fabulous, mm -hmm. fabulous. <laughs> um, and then I found out that I was actually the only trans medium who was there, uh, and they were looking to do more of a meditation group. Uh, and I thought, no, that's not what I, I, I do. And I guided them uh, into uh, what I would classify as a normal circle. Well, the leader of, the, uh, of that group felt that her nose was put out very slightly uh, and closed the group down. Uh, but while I was there, I was introduced to some very nice people uh, who I rang and I said, well, I want to continue with our circle. Um, what do you think about it? Uh, and one lady who is, our, we call her our rock, uh, she said, fantastic, fantastic. Yes, we're going. And then we started up our, our own group, and that was in 2009, I believe it was. Um, so from 2009 to, to now, uh, we've been running weekly healing groups uh, and once a fortnight we have a teaching circle uh, or open circle. Um, we were very lucky, uh, lucky, uh, spirit side. <laughs> yeah. you, you realize when you talk about spirit side, there's no such thing as luck. If they want things to happen, it just, it just melts uh, in. Uh, and this one lady did all the recordings of every group, uh, every meeting that we have, still does, uh, and transcribes them all. Beautiful. And that is why, how I got all the uh, talks, etc., which I put on our website, which, by the way, if anybody's interested, is insightsfromspirit.com, uh, which is um, all lowercase, no, no spaces. Um, now, in our group, um, we have, have had some wonderful talks, and I'm talking pre-2010, which is when Morris first arrived. Uh, but none of them from what you would call known people. They were wonderful friends, they were wonderful people from Spirit, uh, Henry, A.B., et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but well, before I go on to uh, going on about when Morris joined us, I have to tell you a little story about uh, Judy, my wife. Now, we, <laughs> we, <laughs> we were married uh, 40, 44 years ago 
just before we came to Australia. And uh, Judy never knew anything really about spiritualism. Uh, she was quite a good Christian person. Uh, she used to go to church regularly. Uh, she had Christian beliefs, didn't accept a lot of things that the church had, had said. And when we first came to Australia, um, we were going to live for a short time with mum and dad. And now Judy realized that if we're staying with mum and dad, they have these spooky things uh, twice a week. Um, <laughs> that's the way she thought of it, you know, you know, these spooky things, you know, don't really want to know anything about it, don't know anything about it. And mum, who was a wonderful lady, took, took Judy aside and gave her a book uh, as an introduction, which I would recommend to anybody when they are looking into spiritualism. And that is Morris Barbonell's This is Spiritualism. This is Absolutely good. wonderful book. Uh, as a start off of what is happening, etc. cetera. Um, so in 2010, I was sitting down, uh, all my trance work at that time uh, was all light trance. And this gentleman came through and I thought, I don't know you, because you know you feel the vibration, uh, and it was different. Mm -hmm. And this gentleman came through with this very strong, correct English um, voice, um, and introduced himself as Morris Barbonell. Now, he thought, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, so he came through, uh, a few times, a couple, a few times before Judy, she, he asked Judy uh, to talk to him, and she was dumbstruck. She said, "What?" Well, she said, "Why? Well, what's the problem?" He said, "Well, I can't believe that I'm really speaking to the man who wrote that book." <laughs> wow. Yeah, and uh, I mean, he turned to her uh, and said, well, I can assure you, you are, and I am the man. Uh, yeah, so 2010, Morris, 2014, sorry, 2012, uh, Estelle came through for the first time. Uh, and as you realised, they now are the two most important people in our journey forward as far as taking the uh, teachings um, forward. Uh, Morris decided, or the spirit team decided in 2014, um, that we needed to do something to get the message out there. Uh, and he said, so what I want you to do is set up a website uh, where you can post the teachings. Now, everything I'd, I've ever done for Spirit, I do free of charge. And um, the teachings, uh, which I've put down on Insight from Spirit, uh, and have done since 2014, I've put two talks uh, per person, uh, per month, uh, can be down, downloaded on a PDF form uh, and they are totally free for anybody to use. Uh, the only rider I have is the fact that if you're using it, um, that you acknowledge where it came from. Um, so I think that's you not know, unreasonable. I love, I love some of the stuff that you have in there. I'm, I'm going to be spending a lot of time um, well, there's a lot of talks there, isn't there? Oh my God, it's beautiful. I mean, I even saw, I mean, one was proof of survival versus the teachings. More about being a guide, wanting to change past decisions. I mean, there's so much. And oh, yes. it makes you think, I love that stuff, because it really makes you think. Yeah, no, well, the wisdom uh, and knowledge from both Estelle and Morris, uh, you can't fault it because... They've been there, done it, uh, and their knowledge 
spirit side and earth plane wise is incredible. Yes. Um, I mean, Estelle and I talk, because I talk to them obviously on a regular basis, uh, refer to Boris as the teacher um, because when he delivers his talks, you know he's right, you know you have to listen because you know what he's saying is totally correct. Um, whereas Estelle, she has incredible knowledge, but she tries or her way of presenting herself is she wants to make herself human because that's what they keep trying to break down the barrier between spirit and human wow. or spirit and physical. Uh, I said, because we're both the same. The only difference is that we have a physical body. And I mean, I loved it uh, just recently. Uh, she was given a talk at a, a demonstration that we were doing and I was in live trance at the time. Um, and she said, people have a great mystery, mystique about talking to spirit. Mm -hmm. You talk to spirit every day. I said, and you, you can see everybody thinking, yeah, right. He said, yes. He said, I'm, uh, like now I'm talking to Kathy. She's spirit. She just happens to be contained within a physical body. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Yes. So, in other words, we're no different. Yes. We're still the same people. And that's why what she tries to break down. I mean, she has such an incredible uh, humor uh, and way to put people um, calm. But her knowledge is just at outstanding. Wow. And... Uh, we call it the, the teachings from Morris and the wisdom from Estelle. <laughs> That's our little joke together. <laughs> uh, now, when Morris told us, uh, or our team uh, told us that we had to go forward, uh, and he, I mean, he jokingly said, you, you don't think we really just came to uh, give your teachings to our little group. Um, we have a bigger plan. I thought, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, what's the bigger plan? He said, well, you know, first thing uh, is we had to get the, the website up. And the reason we needed to get the website up is so that there was a library of good information which people could refer to after they've listened to the talks or the demonstration. They can then have it there. And that will be it there for perpetuity for a long time. <laughs> um, so Morris said, well, we need to take it uh, forward. And I said, yeah, okay, okay. And just before they'd uh, told me this, uh, they'd introduced me to a gentleman, um, Stephen Herman, uh, who's an American, but lives in New Zealand. And he was doing a uh, mediumship uh, course. Uh, which I was told to, to go to, um, which I did. It was over in uh, New Zealand, three-day course. Um, as a result, Stephen and I uh, got very close. Uh, I'd met him before on Facebook and uh, we've been co corresponding. Uh, and in fact, I've actually worked with him now in uh, New Zealand, Australia and uh, in America. Uh, in, in Maine. Uh, but after I'd been uh, to this workshop, he, was, he said, I'm coming to Brisbane. Uh, you, why don't you come up uh, to uh, one of our, uh, our course up there? I thought, yeah, I don't want to do that. I've just done it. I've done that. I don't really want. But Spirit Side said, no, it's necessary for you to go. Now, Brisbane uh, is in Queensland, which is a 13, about a 13 hour drive uh, from Sydney. Um, we do it, we go there twice a year now uh, and we do it over, we drive, we do it over two days. We drive up there over two days. Wow. Um, and I'll go on to uh, that in, in, in a minute. Now, 
when we were at uh, this demonstration or this workshop that Seema did, one of the things he was doing was a, a mediumship demonstration. And after the mediumship demonstration, you know, you all sit, stand around and have your coffee and that and have a chat. Morris got onto my back and said, uh, see that lady over there? I want you to go give her a message. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I didn't, never knew this lady from Adam. <laughs> and I said, yeah, you just don't walk up to somebody and say, hey, by the way, I've got a message for you. you know, it's, just, it's just not something you do. And I said, no, I, don't, I can't do that, Morris. <laughs> he kept bugging me and bugging me and I eventually, oh, okay, okay, okay. So I tapped the ladies uh, on the shoulder and I said, I have a friend, Spirit Side, who insists that I come over and talk to you. And I didn't know then that she was actually a first class medium, clairvoyant, clairaudient. Uh, and she knew Morris when he was on the earth plane. Oh my her, her mother actually used to work with Morris uh, during their uh, fundraisings for funds for the psychic news. Um, so they often used to. Uh, converse and uh, be so she knew Morris very well and uh, he said hey she turned to me and said oh yeah uh, who's that so I said it's uh, Ma uh, Morris Barton now and you could just see her eyes raise and I think you know oh yeah right okay <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Morris proceeded to talk to me and I conveyed exactly what she said and what he said uh, word perfect uh, which is what they keep telling me I have to do. Uh, and her face dropped. And she said, what you have just told me is the last conversation I had with Morris the last time I saw him on the earth plane. Oh, my goodness. Um, and Morris afterwards said, you want a proof? <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be yeah. great. Yeah, well, anyway, it le led on from there. Uh, and uh, Stephen was doing a demonstration at her church the next day. Um, so I, I went along and we got talking. And she asked me, she said, well, I run a mediumship um, train, train, or train mediums uh, on a Monday night. Uh, I'd love you to come and give us a talk or a demonstration. So I said, yeah, fair enough, I'll, I'll do that, which I did. And then she conveyed uh, a story uh, which brought everything into light. She said, a week before I met you, she said, I walked into my uh, living room and I said, she is clairvoyant. Uh, and she saw this man standing there with his back to him, back to her. Uh, and she looked and thought, no, no, that's not human. That's not physical. That's spirit. All right. So she turned out and said, yeah, what the hell do you think you're doing here? <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and Morris turned around and she said, well, that's a nice way to greet an old friend, isn't it? Oh my goodness, wow. Uh, and she said, yeah, after she met me, she realized why Morris was there because he said he'd just come to check her out and check out the establishment. Uh, that was three and a half, uh, three and a half years ago. Uh, I now twice a year do her church, uh, and four times a year, uh, I sit as a, a medium for, um, their, uh, medium group, uh, which I normally have between 20 and 20 and 40 people. Uh, and, um, over that period of time, obviously, Morris and this lady, I don't like using names uh, because I haven't asked their permission, <laughs> um, have had conversations uh, and given me total reassurance of the fact that he is exactly who he says he is. Wow. Yeah. Um, and you need that confidence. And, it, and the same with Estelle. She knew Estelle uh, at that time. Um, so therefore, that was another method of confirmation. Um, 
then they, they, Stephen asked me if I would come over to America uh, with him. And I uh, said, yeah, a long way away. Why do I hate that? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he, he was the guest or, or the, uh, the medium for a week at Temple Heights, which is up in Maine. Uh, um, so I said, yeah, they told me to go. So I said, yeah, all right. My wife and I uh, went up there and uh, loved it and loved the people. And being introduced to the spiritual communities which they have in the camps uh, was an eye-opener. But then came my second proof. Uh, one, one of the ladies who, who was at Temple Heights wanted to go and see a friend who was at Cap Etna. Uh, she didn't have a car. And I said, well, I always want, I wanted to go see what Cap Etna was like. So, you know, we'll take you up there for the day, uh, which, we, which we did. And um, while she was talking to her friend, I got into the office and I was talking to the, uh, uh, the president of the, uh, the camp and uh, said that, uh, you know, I'm a trance medium from uh, Australia uh, and I have Morris and Estelle, Morris Barb and Estelle, and like a lot of people in America, they think, yeah, right, who the hell are they? Um, because they're not American, they're English. <laughs> um, and after we'd had this, uh, this conversation, she said, well, I'm, it's amazing that you've come in because half an hour ago, the medium we were going to have for a trance demonstration cancelled. Wow. So would you mind stepping in? Wow. Uh, <laughs> yep, yeah, okay, okay. So I did. Um, there I, I was introduced to another lady who actually used to work with Morris. Wow. <laughs> uh, she was very skeptical uh, when I, I told her, yeah, um, but she was in a bind uh, and she needed uh, a trance medium. I mean, she gave me uh, a very nice um, introduction when I was on platform, when we were talking one-to-one, uh, -one, and she said, I don't know you from Adam, and I don't care who you think you are. If you're not genuine, I'm going to jump in and kick you off the, uh, the uh, stage. Oh my goodness. I thought, yeah, that's a nice way to um, give you yes. confidence and get yourself established. Yes. Anyway, uh, I thought, yeah, I'd be put here for a reason. Um, anyway, Morris came through, had a talk to her, in fact, brought her up on stage to act as MC for answering questions from the uh, audience. Wow. Um, I've since, we've since got, become great friends uh, and have worked together. And she never um, kicked you off the stage, so it must have been fabulous. Oh yeah, no, she didn't kick <laughs> us off the stage, so she, she, was, she was right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then we come back to Australia uh, and Mara said, well, we need to do this more regularly, uh, this demonstration. And I said, well, I'm not comfortable with it uh, at the moment, Morris. He said, why not? I said, because all the work I've been doing uh, is in light trance. And as you know, when you're in light trance, you're aware of everything that's been said. Um, and the number of times I've had a thought going through my mind while they are in trance, and that thought has been transpired into what the guy was saying. And I thought, no, I'm not comfortable with that. Uh, I want to be totally away. And I said, you know, the only way I can do that is I want to be in deep trance. Well, Estelle couldn't understand why. She said, all my work that I did on the earth plane, uh, when we did Albert Hall and all the rest of it, said it was all done in light trance. So I said, yeah, but I'm not going forward unless we get deep trance. Uh, I said, yeah, that's my 
you could say that's my condition. Um, so they tried to develop me in deep trance and uh, Morris told me, it's very simple, all you do is you go to sleep and then we'll take over. Well, I have a problem going to sleep in the first place. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so they had a few difficulties. Um, and uh, Estelle had a problem uh, with it, but said, we've got to work out a way of doing it. Uh, and they came up with a method which I thought was brilliant. Um, they take me over in light trance, so I'm fully aware of who they are and who they're And within one or two minutes, they've deepened the trance to the point where I'm either in a very deep light trance, which means that you're, you're right in the background and there's nothing you can think or say or, or that, that interferes. Uh, in fact, you're really not aware very much of what's saying, just that the fact the words are coming out. Um, or they take me into deep trance, which means I remember nothing. Wow. Yes. Uh, absolutely nothing. They, they take me away. And um, some people had asked what happens uh, when you're in deep trance, where you go. And I said, I have absolutely no idea where I go. Uh, and Estelle was asked and said, well, we're giving them a bat and ball to go and play somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, is, oh, my God. That's yeah. Well, the uh, work has uh, moved on from there. I mean, from our first visit up to Queensland, as I said, which was three and a half years ago, uh, when we first went up there, uh, we had uh, three meetings. We now go up there twice a year for a period of two weeks. And last time, which was last May, I had one free day. Wow. <laughs> Why? Going to one free and that's doing home circles and uh churches uh demonstrations um one of which uh which i do uh twice a year is the brisbane spiritualist church which incidentally conan doyle actually laid the foundation stone uh when it was first built over 100 years ago oh and it was purposely built as a spiritualist church wow which was fa fantastic you know, I'm saying that a lot. I'm saying, wow, all the time. I'm listening to you. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I, I, I look at it, because it's happening to me, it's just normal. It's just the way life's evolved. Mm -hmm. um, I had to, I'll tell you a little story. Uh, you mentioned Aiden Hall uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, the other side, directed me to something that he was putting up there and uh, up on the uh, up on Facebook and I then started making a few comments and then we started talking to each other on Facebook and on Messenger and I realised, I thought, this bloke's on the same wavelength as me. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing as Stephen, we were on the same wavelength. Um, but he, he was at that time lost. He was at a crossroads, he didn't know what to do, where to go or anything else. Um, and Estelle uh, said, I want to talk to him. So I said, well, okay. Uh, I then mentioned that to Aidan and I said, yeah, well, it'd be lovely if I could come up and uh, we could sit together uh, in, in one of your circles. Uh, and by the way, and he said, yeah, I said, and by the way, Estelle wants to have a talk to you. So if you don't mind, I'll come a bit earlier um, so we can facilitate that. This is not something I've ever done before. Wow. <laughs> um, so Judy, uh, my wife and myself, we, we arrived there early, uh, later than I would expect it because he's right out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> uh, and then in the afternoon, uh, after we got chatting and got comfortable, uh, said, well, let's uh, go upstairs to the uh, sanctuary, uh, his healing or his um, circle room. Uh, and we'll let uh, Estelle do um, what she wanted to do. Anyway, 
we went upstairs. I sat in his uh, in his chair um, in his cubicle, um, and Estelle came through almost almost immediately. Um, took me away, and Estelle and Aiden had a forty five minute conversation. One to one. Oh my God. Uh, where he said she gave him all the information which he needed because he was at a crossroads, didn't know where to go. Uh, and she said, just made everything so logical. Uh, and he knew exactly after he'd had that meeting of what he had to do, where he had to go, and what direction. Uh, and yeah. it's, it's amazing to me because I interviewed Aiden and he is lovely. His energy is so beautiful. And he posted the pictures in my group about, you know, his, his area, his room. Yes. Talking about you going there. And I'm like, I can picture it because I've seen the pictures. It's yes, yeah, the, how it's all worked out. Everything yeah. is connecting. Yeah, well, I was, I, I mean, I was sitting in the cabinet uh, that he'd created there. And the energy in that room is fabulous. Um, it was another amazing thing, though. Estelle brought me back uh, after we'd been talking for 45 minutes. And as soon as I got back, within one minute, there was a knock on the door. The first person of the group, the, the, the his circle, uh, had arrived. Uh, not before Estelle had finished. Wow. Um, and Aiden was just, wow. wow. So I said, well, why do you think Estelle then said it was time for her to go? Because she had known that we'd be interrupted. Wow. Uh, and we then uh, proceeded to, in the evening, with his group, which is a fantastic group, really is fantastic. Uh, have a trance evening uh, where he had three of his guides come through uh, and I uh, allowed um, Mor <laughs> Morris and Estelle to come through. Uh, and the, the whole evening was just electric. It was fabulous. It was one of the nicest uh, trance night I've had because to sit with somebody who was genuine uh, and a de genuine medium uh, and to have everybody in the group so switched on to spiritual teaching, spiritual knowledge, knowing all about it. Um, therefore, they were able, both Morris and Estelle were able to raise the level of the talks they were giving to a level which people with a deeper understanding could take. Because that's what uh, Estelle says whenever she goes to a new group, uh, whether it's in a hall or a church, she visits the auras of everybody who is there. Oh uh, the reason to do that, she said, because I have to adjust my talk to the level of understanding of the group. There's no point in giving high level uh, theological teachings to somebody who doesn't know what someone and is, uh, isn't really convinced about the continuation of life, uh, etc. They don't, they don't know they'd be lost. Yeah. So therefore she addressed that. But, and she said it was just so wonderful to be able to speak to people using higher philosophy. Oh my gosh. Uh, which I, was fabulous. I, I had to tell you this. Your energy and Aiden's energy, and you said that, you know, you guys are the same. The energy is the same. I can feel that. It's beautiful. Um, I'm sitting here. I'm just listening to the story because I'm so fascinated. It's like you're, you're just saying so many super amazing things to me. And so I'm, I almost forget that I'm supposed to ask you questions, but you're answering everything and it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Oh, and, and you haven't had goosebumps yet, so. <laughs> oh, no, 
know. I have. I absolutely <laughs> have. I just haven't said it. I'm just like, every time you, when I say wow, I'm like, oh my God. You know, I just haven't said it. Too. Oh my. Yeah. Now, well, I just wanted to talk a little bit uh, about the other part of our uh, work, um, which we generally, up until the lo- up until two demonstrations uh, in Queensland ago, uh, happens in our home healing group, uh, as I said, which we hold once uh, once a week, and um, when we were in Scotland last year, not this one, not this one that I've just uh, been to uh, the UK, but the year before, uh, I was fortunate enough to sit in Chris Ratter's um, healing uh, clinic uh, mm-hmm. while, while I was up there. And I found it very interesting, but so totally different to what, uh, what we, we do. Um, one thing, uh, his healing is done totally uh, in silence. Uh, he doesn't do hands on all his healing is six, nine inches away from uh, the patient, but the power is still there. I mean, I've been on the healing, his healing couch, so I'm aware uh, of that. Our uh, healing is in trance, total full trance. Um, whereas, I mean, I, Chris, I uh, know, does all his in light trance. Um, so he's, he's, he's aware. Um, <coughs> ours are all in full trance and our healing guides talk to patients. Wow. They actually converse with them. Oh my goodness. And this is important because a lot of the times the problems that people have are psychosomatic and therefore they need to be put onto the right path. Um, and we've always, I mean, mum and dad, uh, when they had their healing group, it was done exactly the same way. So my assumption was that it all went like uh, that there, found out I was wrong when you go to churches and things, it's all totally different. And I found that in some ways we were fairly unique in the way that we do our healing. And the best way I can explain uh, the healing, I want to give you, uh, if you uh, would like, two examples of healings that we had. Uh, First thing is the healing guides always say that spiritual healing is not a replacement to the work that the earth plane doctors do. And therefore, if the earth plane doctors can heal you, can deal with you, that's where you've got to go. We are there to supplement, uh, not take the place of. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, one of our uh, ladies, uh, the lady who, who does all the transcript, had a friend uh, of many years who had two huge hernias. Uh, one literally the size of an orange uh, off to the side uh, of her body. The other about that long, about 12 inches long, uh, across her abdomen, uh, and it was shaped like a, uh, a rugby ball. Um, and she was terrified of going under the knife, um, earth plane doctor wise. I mean, she wasn't scared. She was terrified, which is why she had never, never uh, been. So the first time uh, she was brought to our group, um, she lay on the healing couch. And when a patient first goes on the healing couch, uh, the healing guide, then the helpers, we always have two helpers, one at the head, one at the foot. The healing guide runs my hands, their hands, over the patient to give a diagnosis, to find out where the problem is, uh, and then proceeds 
to bring the uh, helpers in to then carry on with the healing. Now, most of our healing is what you would classify as hands-on healing. Uh, they go to the problem area, lay the hands on, the healing power is then delivered uh, and healing is always done from spirit to spirit um, and then the healing is um, performed. Now this lady, as I said, she had two obvious hernias uh, and the drive, they had about a nearly a two hour drive to come to our, our meeting. Uh, and on the way home, they were, uh, they were talking in the car and Mr. Rosen, Ms. Rosen is head of our uh, healing group. Um, and by the way, he, he used to be a surgeon when he was on the earth plane. Not essential for when you're a healing guide, but it, it does help uh, because he then he knows anatomy and uh, all the rest. Um, but anyway, they were having a talk and Mr. Rosen had told her, your problem uh, is that your bowel uh, is twisted and we need to fix it. And she said to her, uh, her friend on the way home, you know, he doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, he's an idiot. <laughs> he said, you know, it's obvious uh, what my, my problem is. I've got two hernias. You know, you can, you can feel them uh, and see them. But what she hadn't known is that the one hernia, the one the size of an orange, had twisted and that had created a blockage, uh, which was what's causing her most of her pain. And on the first healing over the first week, that was, untwist was untwisted with the healing power, not, not physically. Uh, so when she came back the next week, she said, well, the twisted bowel is cured. Hasn't the pain uh, eased? And she said, yeah. So well, now we can work on the hernias. I couldn't work on them before because the twisted bowel uh, was a problem. Anyway, she came to uh, the healing. It, not, it wasn't anything instant. Uh, took, uh, I don't know, three, six months. Uh, she gets to come uh, every week. But at the end of that period, both hernias were totally within the wall, stomach wall, where they should be. Uh, the opening where that it had ripped was totally sealed. And to this day, and this is probably four years later, uh, she'd never had a problem. She still comes to our healing group uh, as a helper. <laughs> wow. Um, so, yeah, that is just absolutely amazing, you know, to get that sort of proof uh, from, from the healing guides. And when we were doing the uh, work up in uh, Queensland, one of the ladies uh, who was actually vice president of um, uh, Brisbane Spiritualist Church uh, asked, would you mind doing a healing demonstration when you uh, come and do our uh, home circle demonstration uh, circle? Um, I said, yeah, I, I had a word with uh, uh, our friends and they said, yeah, yeah, no problem. So I said, yeah, we need to have only three patients. Uh, and Mr. Rosen, who was coming through to do the healing, uh, said he will choose them. Uh, he said, and we'll do that on the night with it. And there was, I don't know, probably about 25 people there. Um, and he pointed out where, where and who he wanted. Uh, one of the gentlemen uh, who took the healing couch uh, had just been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Uh, and he was due uh, to have a few tests uh, or a few more tests and then see his oncologist uh, I guess two or three weeks later. But he was put on the healing couch, Mr. Rosen, uh, in trance, uh, did the examination and said, now I want you to lay still. Uh, he then proceeded to do a spiritual operation. Wow. Um, and 
we didn't know at the time, but one of the ladies who was in the group was a theater nurse. And she came to me afterwards and said, I have experienced and watched many operations in the theater. What I just experienced was textbook perfect for that particular operation. Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. it was mad. <laughs> I, I thought, wow. <laughs> uh, anyway, the gentleman went to his uh, oncologist, as I said, two or three weeks later. He looked at all the tests and he said, go home. He said, why? He said, because you're cancer free. Wow. It's all gone. That's, wow. um, and that was done purely as a demonstration. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. It and is. Now, now you know why I'm so enthusiastic mm -hmm. about the work we do. Yes. Um, nobody can tell me that what I do is wrong because of the help that we, we give. Mm -hmm. Nobody can tell me that Morris and Estelle are there to come through and give their teachings. I've had too many proofs. Yes. Yeah. I mean, when we were at uh, Cap Etna uh, doing the demonstration, because it was full of spiritualists uh, and a lot of mediums there, I had five or was it six uh, mediums come up to me afterwards and say, before you went into trance, we saw Morris standing alongside you. Um, and that, that was, once again, to give me confidence that what was happening was right. And therefore, you know, you have to be, when you're given so much proof, um, and that's the big thing they, that they tell you, is we don't ask you to have faith. Faith is not what we're about. We're not uh, into faith. We're into trust. Trust. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We give you proof. We give you uh, an understanding. And once you had proof and understanding, it's the same as going to school, um, is that you learn from your teachers because they have a greater knowledge than you. And you trust that they have the information. Yeah. And that's exactly the same with, our, with our, our teachings. They say, we've given you the proof. Now, because we've given you the proof, we don't ask you to have faith in uh, what we're saying. You know that you can trust us. And because you can trust us, you can accept what we say as correct. And one of the big mistakes I think a lot of people have is they say that they have had X, Y, Z from spirit and therefore it has to be right. They don't define what level of purity, what level of vibration that particular spirit is. It could be, a, and if they, they love to use the example of the school system. They said they could have only been educated up to kindergarten level or standard one, standard two. Obviously the information that they can give you is at that level. We are fortunate that we have university professors. Um, I classify uh, Morris Estelle and our other guides in, in that uh, ilk. Um, and therefore the teachings that they can give you have a far, far more depth uh, and a far more level or far better level of understanding than you would get from somebody who was a kindergarten teacher, who was a grade one, grade two teacher but they're all from spirit. So 
always be careful. Equally, always be careful with what you read because a lot of books are written for one reason, for profit. Um, there's a lot of books that are done for that, but are genuine. Yeah. But equally, there's a lot of trash out there. Yeah. I'm sure in your uh, experience, you would have picked that up as well. <laughs> yes, I have, I have, I have. You know, I have to tell you that, you, you know, the goosebumps. Oh, I've been having the goosebumps the whole time. <laughs> but I, I mean, there's a couple of times where I felt um, tears come to my eyes because, I mean, I'm just going to tell you what's happening here is I love your story. I love how everything connected. You met the right people, the right time. Everything opened yes. up. You and, and us talking now. I mean, I met, I interviewed, I mean, yes, I could interview anybody, but I interviewed Aiden and had the most wonderful conversation and chatted with him. And then Chris. And But what's interesting to me is then you bring up trace and trust or faith and trust. And I'm sitting here and I know spirits with me and I know that I'm seeing these lights around you. And I'm like, because I always say, what, what, why is this happening? Why am I connecting with all these beautiful people willing to share their story, their unfoldment, um, you know, and all these connections. And it's really, you're really helping other people. And I mean, you're helping me right now. Cause I'm like, I mean, seriously, I had so many times I wanted to wipe the tears away because it was beautiful. The work that you do is so beautiful. You do not charge. You don't charge for this work. You've been doing this for so long, and you yeah. ask for you know, um, you know, donations or or. Um, well, the only exception to that is when we started going overseas, uh, etc. Obviously, uh, it's a big expense. Yes. Yes. Uh, and I've never covered uh, cost yet, but. <laughs> Something Morris said, uh, which I've raised with several mediums, uh, is that if you don't put a charge on it, people don't value it. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, if you have a, a charge, which I will never accept anything for myself, it all goes into uh, traveling expenses. Mm -hmm. I mean, my last trip to England, uh, the amount of money we received didn't even cover the cost of the hire car. Um, never mind airfares and hotel fares and all the rest of it. But they've made it possible for me to do that at the moment. And they said it's necessary to do that in the initial stages until we get an acceptance uh, and an understanding um, worldwide. And I said, yep, okay. <laughs> I don't know whether I want to go there. <laughs> and you know what? And you listen to your guides. That's a beautiful. You might, you might argue with them, but you oh, do yes. listen to them. And that's beautiful. You know? yeah, yeah. And I remember when we were having our uh, conversations on Messenger earlier, I thought, I didn't have very much to say, and I just looked at the clock, and we've been talking for an hour and a half. Yeah. Hey, I mean, it was beautiful, the whole thing. And you know what? One of the things is I had these notes, but what I have found is that sometimes I don't barely have to ask anything because, I mean, spirit knows exactly, you know, they, they know what's the conversation is going to be. And so sometimes it's like when I think of a question as you're talking, you it's start answering it. And I'm like, <laughs> what? I, and it's beautiful because it's like a conversation and, and I'm listening and I'm just so entrenched in this and like, oh my God, that's just amazing. I'm just having so many aha moments and, and you, you know, I was going to ask you about the healing, the different healing and, and you explained that, you know, I was going to go even deeper than that, but I mean, it was amazing. I, I could well, sit and listen to you. your stories. I'm telling you, you must have all these amazing stories. And well, I, it's I'm 69 now. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I've been in uh, spiritualism uh, since I was nine years old. So I've had 60 years um, with a 13 year gap in the middle uh, oh my goodness. Uh, of, 
um, spiritual work and spiritual teaching. But in that gap period, uh, the reason uh, we had that gap period is that there, I had too many things in my mind to do the work that I do now. We ha we're running a family uh, building business uh, and I had too many things. And they said it was necessary for you to have that so as you then will have the financial security when you close down, which we closed down just a four and a half years ago, to do the work uh, that we want you to do. Interesting, we closed down four and a half years ago and they put me on uh, this current course four years ago. Yeah. So who said it was my decision to close down? That's true. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Because I, I, I had full intention uh, of continue working for another six years from now. But as I said, we've been retired for four and a half years. Uh, but it came to pass that my wife, Judy, uh, her MS got a lot worse. Um, and which is why I've been actually conversing with Sandy Ingham for the last three years. Uh, wonderful lady. Yes, beautiful. Uh, beautiful lady. And I was diagnosed with cancer. Um, interesting, uh, um, my oncologist three years ago uh, said maximum probably another five years. Um, Morris, has been talking to me and he talks about plans that he has for 10 years time. So I think um, spirit has a little bit more to do with uh, when I leave uh, or when I don't. <laughs> yes, yes, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Yeah. But I have 100% trust in them now. Uh, and I think that is a big, breakthrough when you change from having faith to having trust yeah. because if you have faith you accept what somebody else has said if you have trust you know in yourself that what is being said is fact yeah. you're not having faith you just know i mean you oh. know yeah. tomorrow morning the sun will rise mm -hmm. because it's a fact. It's a fact. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's the difference in the way I have my attitude, should we say. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've had that now for a lot of years, um, which is wonderful. It, yeah. And it's very necessary for the work that I do. Yeah. And I, as you say, I have so many different stories I could tell you and relate to, but we would be here all day. We will be here all day, but I really, really, you know, actually, I want to ask you one more question or one question, maybe. Um, is there any advice that you could give people starting out developing trance that you would think that of? That question, actually, uh, but I've been doing demonstrations and uh, a lot of the people that I go to uh, are clear, clear audience or clairvoyant, or clairaudient and clairvoyant, and they asked me the same thing. Uh, I said, well, initially, in very light trance, have trust, let it go, and you just repeat what has come, exactly the same thing as you do when you're giving your messages. Uh, you get in your head and you, you repeat them. Uh, to develop properly, you need to either meditate or as they call now, sit in the power. Um, and the other side will develop you because as Estelle has told me many times, once you have prepared yourself, we have to do the work. In other words, spirit side have to do the work. You can't develop yourself. Yeah, the development has to come from spirit. Yeah, uh, and therefore you have to have trust. trust. And when you go into being a deep light trance or a deep trance medium, 
you have to have 100% trust. Because basically, you're handing your physical body over to somebody else to take over uh, and utilize to take their message, give their messages over. And when they, uh, when I'm in trance, they have full control. They have control of my hands, they have control of uh, everything. Um, and I have no control of anything that is said or done. That's because I have full trust in them and I have allowed them to take over. And that's, that's the thing. You've always, as a medium, you always have control. If you don't feel it's right, close down. Because uh, there are mischievous people, spirit side out there. Not evil, mischievous, who would love to come in and mess, mess, your, mess with your brains and mess with uh, the work you're doing. <laughs> Um, but the big problem that people I found uh, when I've been talking to them is the, they don't have the capacity to have that trust to say, I allow you to come in and utilize my, my body. I don't say it like that there. I always, and this is something which some people agree with some other people don't but whether we are sitting for our home circle our healing circle whether i go into meditation i always ask for protection every time not not, not i don't ask for protection i mean some people say you've asked for protection and that uh, that yeah that might work for them it doesn't work for me and therefore i feel as a respect I will always ask for protection. They assured me that they always will, and they put a cone of power or, or a bubble of power around me to make sure that the wrong people don't come in, um, which did happen once. Uh, we were doing a demonstration. Um, they were relaxed, and they didn't put the power around, protection around me, and a misguided soul came in. Wow. Um, only ever happened once. It, it shook the life out of me uh, and it nearly made me pack the whole thing up um, because it terrified me, the fact that that could happen. Uh, but it never has happened since and they assured me that it never will um, because they have doubled their efforts to make sure that a strong protection is around. So we always, are, and whenever we go into our teaching circle or our healing circle, we always open with a prayer and close with a prayer. And I feel that is once again, in respect for our connection and what we do with them. Yes. I think that's beautiful. I think that's absolutely beautiful. I'm, I'm glad that you threw that little story in there with the, um, the, um, the person jumping in um, and yeah. only me once. Um, but yeah, I love that. I love that you connect, um, um, meditate, sit in the power, um, the prayer. Yeah, as often as uh, they want me to. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You know what, Roy? I loved this interview. It is about like an hour and a half um, yeah. about there. It is perfect. I'm not kidding you. Um, everything you touched on, the way you talked about it. You know, you might not have heard me say the goosebumps, but I was certainly having it. And I, I mean, I loved it. Everything, it's just so weird for me that everything connected. And, and these were things I were, was thinking about. And you're telling me everything in this, this interview. And, well, thank uh, you. and I, I had the tears come into my eyes because I just couldn't believe it. But I am so grateful to have you here. I want everybody to check out um, insightsfromspirit.com. There is so much beautiful um, spiritual truths um, from um, Maurice Barba, Barbanel. Barbanel, yes. Barbanel and yes. Estelle 
Roberts. The Roberts. And there's, he's had, they, they put all this information in there. So much beautiful information. I'm going to be in there forever reading this stuff. And <clears throat> I'm so grateful. <clears throat> and you have to excuse me. I'm coming down with the cold. So I am hoping that I'm not going to. Your, 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 vo your voice stood up through the, as long as it ne needed to. As long as it needed to. But I am so grateful to you for taking the time. I know we have this time difference. And I just am so excited about it. I'm so, so grateful to you for doing well, this. Uh, I, I thank you for the invite to come and talk to you. Um, it's been very, you're very easy to talk to, um, <laughs> oh, which is nice. <laughs> right back at you completely. It was just wonderful. But, oh my God. So I thank you again. I wish you the best day ever because your day is just starting and ours is yes. ending in the U.S., you are in Australia. And, and again, thank you so very much. Roy. Well, well, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to share. Oh, my goodness. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.